Many of you enjoy my quality stocks trading at fair value videos. You like them very much. You like the quality stocks. They are not overvalued. They're trading at fair value. But very rarely you get opportunities like this one in the video where you have what you could call a quality stock that's also somewhat of a value stock because it's extremely undervalued. Quality company, very high margins, around 53% net income margins trading below 15 times earnings. You don't get it very often, and this is a very rare occasion, and I'm excited to share this one today in the video. It's mainly an update because I've discussed it before, and I think it's presenting a good buying opportunity, and I really hope you enjoy it. And this stock is EVVTY, which is Evolution Gaming. It's trading, I believe, on the Swedish exchange, but you could also buy it on OTC. It's available in most brokers. It's now sitting at $90 per share, down 23.5% year to date. The stock has been an absolute disaster. And I used to own it, and I'm thinking of getting back in because it's getting too cheap to ignore at $90 per share. And a lot of you are familiar with it because many popular YouTubers have been recently uh, talking about the stock, but they own a lot of the live, you could say online casinos, live casinos, and then they have the RNG, which is slots, live slots, and live casinos in general. So mainly online gambling stuff, they're a pretty big uh, part of it. And this is how they make money. You have the gaming operator, which is mainly MGM, or it could be DraftKings, or it could be another gaming operator. And then you have Evolution, which actually makes the content, they make the games that the gaming operators actually run. And the gaming operators love it because it's a very efficient business model for them. And then Evolution Gaming gets paid in terms of commission and fees and different ways. And it's a very high margin, very good business model in general. And they have some very big partners like DraftKings. They work with DraftKings. They work with Hard Rock. They work with uh, Poker Stars, Penn National Gaming. They have many popular gaming operators that use Evolution Gaming's services. And it's been going well for them. And they still have a long way to go. Because if you look at the total gaming market in 2023, land-based still makes up 75% in a generation that really likes to be in the comfort of their homes. They like the online stuff. Online is only 25% of the total market. And if you look at the recent growth, live casino is growing around 24% CAGR. RNG, which is mainly the slots, online slots, is growing 20% CAGR, but land-based casino is even growing 1%. So this is where the growth is. This is where everything is happening. And Evolution Gaming is a very large player in this sector. In fact, they have over a 39% market share in regulated markets. They've been maintaining it 40%, 39%. So it's still 39%. So you have massive tailwinds. You have a company, 39% market share. And the question is, why is the stock going down? Why is it trading below 15 times earnings? It's crazy. It shouldn't be trading below 15 times earnings. Well, one of those reasons is that the growth is slowing down. The company used to grow 37%, 50%, 50%, 90%, 36%, 23%. .90%. Now the growth is 15%, and it's likely going to be 15% for a while. So once you go from 19 to 36 to 23 to 15, uh, I don't think the stock could really take it. You're going to have some volatility. You're going to have a repricing in the stock. It's still up over 292%. But even at one point, the stock was up like 700%. So it has to price in some of the decline in revenue growth that has happened. And this is the problem with Evolution Gaming, that the growth of it mainly depends on new markets and new countries regulating and you could say being open to gaming or online betting a little bit more and they can enter this market and gain market share and increase their revenues this is one way they increase revenues the second way is they introduce more games which is what they've been doing and by introducing more games to the same places and new stuff maybe at higher fees or different uh, kind of structures. This is how they can also grow uh, revenues. But it's largely dependent on regulators if they, you know, regulate it a little bit more. Uh, maybe they could lose out on some revenue streams. Or maybe if they don't regulate new markets, they could also lose out on revenue streams. When you have expansions more in the United States, in many different states, this could be huge for Evolution Gaming. This is where the growth is lacking. You could see North America, 55, 54. So it's growing, but nothing too crazy. Europe is still growing, but it's a little bit more mature. Asia has been a rapid grower from 164 to 200. Now it's their largest market. It has surpassed Europe. 
Latin America is growing, but not too, not too bad, not too, nothing too crazy. And this is the main problem. The main problem is the growth, which is largely dependent on new countries and new states regulating online gaming. But if they don't, I would expect evolution to keep growing 10 to 15% by releasing new games and doing different things every single year. And it's still growing 15.3%. It's not too bad. But again, the growth did slow down. And this is when you have a lot of critics on uh, Twitter or on YouTube. You know, whenever the stock goes down, they find a reason not to buy it or they find all the bad stuff. But when, whenever it goes up, then you know they don't say anything. This is what happens. And it's a very funny figure. And it mainly shows the total average player uh, of EVO stuff in terms of live revenues or whatever. And it has declined one quarter over the second. From Q2 to Q3, it has declined. And it shows an arrow going down, which means that it's going to crash and the world's over and the stock going to zero and all these things. But maybe this is not the case. Maybe this is another Q4 of 23 where it has declined a little bit and then it went up. You don't have, always have a straight line in the market or in certain figures. Sometimes you have to take a pause. Sometimes you have something that happens occasionally and they pull back a seasonal and then it goes back up again. So this is a possibility. It doesn't mean the company is dead. It doesn't mean Mean it's never gonna grow again but this is one reason the other reason which is a recent one is the companies having you know worker strikes in the country georgia not in the state i believe it was in the country and had to reduce a thousand jobs it was a huge strike that has disrupted operations for a while but then they said as of a recent update that a lot of it that a lot of the employees they did return back to work and only four percent of georgia's workforce for evolution remains on strike so it's being more contained people are going to forget about it soon the company is diversifying they're opening you know studios in other countries they opened one in prague and they're diversifying it's not going to be like that forever and it's a temporary thing and it's likely going to be resolved and the best part is the company or the management isn't just sitting and doing nothing they're buying back massive amounts of stock they bought 591,000 shares as of October 11th 335,000 200,000 150,000 67,000 120,000 500,000 378,000 222,000 so they've been buying back a lot of stock because they believe the company is undervalued and they're taking advantage of it and creating long-term shareholder value and I'm not going to talk about the balance sheet because I don't want to make it too long but the balance sheet is very good for the company very high margin stuff resilient and recurring revenue uh, free cash flow and it's not declining it's growing 15 percent so that in a very good position to do buybacks and they have a dividend and the dividend uh, i believe it's like uh, i could look at it here the dividend is like three and a half percent so you're also getting a nice dividend if you want to invest in the company and some things that could give you a margin of safety is that the management they own a decent stake this is the ceo he owns 684,000 shares i believe in total 10 percent of the management team or 10 percent of the shares are owned by the management team so they have skin in the game and whatever benefits them will likely benefit you and vice versa. And so they're on, on the shareholder side. And this is something that's good to see, especially with a stock that's been going down like evolution. It might scare away a lot of investors, but it's a little bit more reassurance if the management has a stake and they're buying back stock within the company. Now, the company is just an amazing one, as I said. The net income margins around 53%. They used to be 59%, but there was some kind of a tax policy in Europe or whatever it was, and it pushed the net income much lower. But it's still around 53% net income margin. This is almost like Visa. It's an amazing, amazing uh, business model, amazing stuff. And if we look at, for all that stuff, we're getting a company, almost recurring revenue. The industry is growing 22%. The company will likely grow 15% on the low end. The management has a stake, and they're buying back stock, and we're getting all that stuff for 14 times earnings or 13.9 times earnings. This is the lowest it has ever traded at. And it's absolutely insane. And it's extremely, extremely undervalued. But if you look at it on a free cash flow yield, this is 6.7, almost a 7% free cash flow yield, much more than what the Fed is paying you around 5%. And they use 50% of the free cash flow to do dividends, which is around 3.5%. Then they use the other 50% to do other things or do buybacks, which I've been mainly doing. And for me personally, if I look at the stock and if I look at everything else, I think this is a massive overreaction on the stock. I think the risks are overblown. Yes, regulation is a risk, but they're still managing regulations. They managed it before. They can manage it again. 
I'm not saying they're going to grow 50% a year, but if they continue to grow 15% and you have a free cash flow yield of around 7%, this is an amazing return. I believe 15% on the low end, maybe 20% a year on the high end, or keeping could end up a little bit more. So I like this stock very much. And I might buy it very, very soon because it's getting too cheap to ignore. And I like it. That's why I shared it with you here on YouTube. And it wasn't financial advice, just my opinion on Evolution Gaming. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. So I'll talk to you in another video.